Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. We're gonna be talking about season three, episode three of Atlanta. You know I'm obsessed with the series. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts, so leave them down below. I swear this gets better with every episode. I loved last week's episode. I thought they couldn't top it, but they definitely did with this one. Not as funny, but definitely way more thought provoking, so let's get into it. So what I love about this story is it starts off with a shot of Paperboy talking, pans out to earn Darius and Vanessa. Their stroll takes them to what's supposed to be a billionaire's house. Let me take off these because I was wearing these so I didn't miss anything through the episode. You know these glasses don't really help this legally blind girl here, but I tried, okay? I looked at that door like, what kind of billionaire? And when the woman opened and answered with that accent, I said, I've been there. When people have thick accents of any kind, I say, come again, and they say what they said again, and I just, never mind, just just never mind. So the billionaire comes to answer the door, takes them through the trap house. If my mom is watching, I don't know what a trap house is, but if I did know, hypothetically, that's giving heavy trap house vibes, not the watch out for the glass on the floor. Luckily for them, it's just a transition to the real posh place where the party is at. And I was here for the ambiance. As soon as the setting is set, it seems like the four characters separate. Van goes over to get some wine. And I don't know if I was seeing it correctly, but it looked like she was swiping or swiping. Was she stealing something off the shelf? Was that me or... Ern starts talking to the person of interest. Seems like they're supposed to meet an artist of the evening. And then Paperboy and Darius are like, yo, Nando's, I'm here for that. When I saw that, I said, Nando's, we used to have one on Queen West. It doesn't exist anymore. It closed before the panorama. If you live in Toronto and you know where Nando's is still in the six, let a girl know because now I'm craving it. So they go get Nando's. And I thought that was such a funny commentary on being rich and having access and comfort as your key thing. Nando's in the house. So they're eating it. And then Darius goes to the kitchen. We'll talk about his plot line in a second. And Paperboy starts talking to the owner of the house who starts to say things about how he wanted to share the space and entertain. I thought that was very interesting. Maybe I'll talk about that more on the Patreon pod because I have some personal stories about that. Then Homeboy asks Alfred, what do you think about trees? Paperboy's, yeah. They go outside and it's a literal tree. I love this moment. I'm a plant lady. There's way more behind the camera. If you watch the vlogs, you know. So I enjoyed this moment. I would love to have a tree in my house. That's just, I'm on my fern gully. So that moment was hilarious to me. They transition, they go upstairs. We'll talk about that in a sec. I think the best way to break down this episode is by character. Let's do Van first, since her storyline is the shortest and the strangest. So I still don't know why Van is there. 195 other countries, why are you there though? She pushes someone in the pool and Ern's like, are you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm good, I'm just working on me. I had a moment with that. A lot of times when someone starts doing them, people around them who are prospering off of them, not taking care of them, wonder, oh, is everything okay? So I thought that was a poignant moment. But I also wondered, is she really okay? Is she hooking up with Darius? I'm just still trying to figure that out. If she were okay, why is she pushing people in the pool? Because as soon as she got up, she did it again. The second person she pushed was floundering. I couldn't even laugh at that because I was just so worried about Van's mental health and I said, why we gotta be so serious? So that's pretty much all I really took in from her storyline. If there's anything else I missed, let me know down below. Divert to my favorite character though, Darius. So he heads over to the kitchen to get a drink. He says, excuse me. Homegirl thinks he's checking for her. She shows him the left hand real quick. I'm engaged. He said, uh -uh, I just want the gin, miss. And then they have a conversation. It was coming across a little awkward where she was saying, oh, I'm Asian. And when I was in LA, a lot of black guys would hit on me. And he's like, nah, 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 it's okay. But we do have a lot in common, hip hop and anime. And I thought of Meg Thee Stallion. She's a pairing of the two, so I guess it makes sense. Miss Korea, cause I don't remember her name, went off her separate way and Sox enters the stage. Sox, not S-O-X. I wonder how he spells it though. Don't tell me the socks on my feet though. Socks exposes the intense, severe hairline. I say, I feel you. You guys see what I'm working with, not as bad as his sitch. And 
Darius has a strange way of being so earnest and honest that it just warms your heart. He's like, you know, Jason Statham, but also Moby. I said we could have left Moby alone, though. They bond and socks starts talking about how Miss Korea was super racist. First of all, I had my glasses on. I didn't even know she was Asian until she told Dara she was Asian. So we know the prescription doesn't work. Secondly, I didn't really find it that racist, but you can let me know what you think. But the racism politics were strong and heavy in this storyline. Sox gathers and collects a coalition in the corner to talk to Darius about how bad this was. Darius is like, I didn't even know England was like this. I didn't know you had problems like this, which kind of leans on America's the one with the race problem. If you guys have seen my story times, you know Canada has it just as bad. We just pretend we're better, but we're not, which I think is worse. Leave that alone for another day. So I thought that was an interesting conversation. I fell out when the two girls were crying. I said, why are you doing the most? This really said a lot about what people do on social. The outrage I see sometimes on the timeline, I have to mute people. Why are you so outraged about this? But when something happens in real life that's way more tragic, you can't shed a tear. You don't have no soul. I swear people just do it for the theatrics of it. That is exactly what that scene was giving. <laughs> Miss Korea is trying to get Darius's attention to introduce her to her fiance. He's ex nay on that. She doesn't get the memo. She calls him out. And then Darius sitting there while the mob collects around her. You say glass breaking, someone screaming. And he just continues having a conversation with the only person left. They're talking about Pepsi, Coke, and Taco Bell. And Darius is perplexed. I thought you guys cared more about classism than racism here. The other person saying, well, it's all intertwined, isn't it? You can't have one cast thriving without the rest struggling to survive, right? And that really reminded me of what Kim said a couple weeks ago about working hard. Maybe in her mind, she works hard. For all we know, maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. But all the people that came after to say, I work hard and this is the life I live, really spoke to what Darius was saying with the guy in that moment. <sighs> Our society, some things are so sad and I don't know if they'll ever change, but these are the ways of the world. And it's better if we just understand that no matter what country or continent you are, there are gonna be disparities like that. We're gonna table the rest of Darius's plot line to the end. Let's talk about Earn for a second. Earn goes to see TJ's artwork, which is unimpressive at best. <laughs> Not Van just looking at the artwork. I don't know what that guy's position was. He seems like he wants to start an influencer trap house for the rich for free. It didn't make sense for me and Ern was trying to talk him out of it. And then when he intertwines with Paperboy, they have a conversation about, well, the white people scan on TikTok, so what's wrong? I said, if it's swindler season, it's swindler season. I'm not really here for it, but I mean, at the same time, Paperboy isn't wrong. That's when Rollerblade Derby rolls around to say, hey, it's true. Scammers are gonna scam, so we might as well. And I thought it was a very interesting context on race relations, the idea that when it comes to black people, we always worry this person's a representation for the whole cohort, for everyone of color. When you don't hear ethnicity saying that, if one person's out here acting a fool or doing the most or being disrespectful, they aren't a representative of all the same way it seems like black people are, which really speaks on what happened at the Oscars. Will Smith and Chris Rock aren't representatives of black people. They're just people who are rich that happen to be black. I, they don't speak for me, they don't represent me, and personally, I don't care about the situation. So I thought that was very timely and also timeless. Ern is in that beautiful hallway, which let's just talk about it for a moment. Atlanta is one of those shows that does shots and sceneries and angles so well. It really adds to the eeriness of the story. It's not a horror show, but a lot of times it has horror-esque vibes. When Ern is talking to the manager, we'll call him, and the guy is skating down the steps to eavesdrop. That long hallway was so beautiful and Van's looking at the picture. I had a feeling it was gonna be the same picture Ern is fixated on in the end. Before we get into the Paperboy storyline, wrapping up Ern's <laughs> plot, pretty much after he speaks to Paperboy, he's like, you know what, yeah, you know, on average, in order to do this, you're gonna need a manager and I can do that for you. Managers are usually 30%, but I'll take a 25. 
he had to add the extra 5%. While TJ and the manager are talking out the kinks, Ern is looking at the photos on the wall, and that's when he sees the apparition behind Nando. I just scratched my head slowly. I said, let's not let this get eerie. We already had two scary episodes, and I don't remember Atlanta being so supernatural before. <laughs> so now let's wrap it up with Paperboy's story, which pulls everything together. So while all this is happening, Paperboy goes upstairs to play poker after he sees the tree. He's going to smoke some trees. I love how the man's like, respectfully, don't smoke trees in front of the tree. I don't know if it's going to hurt the feelings, if it's going to affect the growth process. I don't know. But don't smoke trees in front of the tree. Paperboy goes up to play poker against three guys. I already knew it was going to be problematic. I just didn't realize what level of problematic it would be. Why? Who asked for this? Why did the man start telling Alfred, because it seems like the other three guys already knew this story, about the wet, ashy, black man? ghost <laughs> what how's he ashy and wet what <laughs> that was all types of oxymoron first of all when alfred put double what he needed to that's really screaming insecurity just like it did in last week's episode he's really doing the most with his money in the wise words of charlemagne i never pay in the presence of people richer than me why did Paperboy put so much money on the table? If you're playing with a billionaire, capital B, you should be broke, okay? That's all I'm saying. You play with your lowercase b for broke. So <laughs> Paperboy wins. And I wasn't sure if Nando was upset that Paperboy won or if it was because Paperboy was roasting him about being taken advantage of by the wet, ashy black ghost. He gets up, he walks away. Everyone else leaves the table. I said... Did everyone know this is how it was going to end? That he was going to swindle the situation? And that's why Earn and Paperboy have that conversation under the stairs about, well, scammers going to scam, so why not? I thought that was very interesting. Okay, where is this going? And it didn't really go because Darius comes up and he's like, okay, it's time to go. Earn's looking at the photograph like, yep, yep, yep. And then you hear the chainsaw going off. Paperboy apparently rented Rick Ross's chainsaw and is trying to chop down the tree, taking up things to collect back his 40 Gs. They all hop in the van without Van. I said, where's Van? Meanwhile, Miss Korea is sitting on the floor crying. They close the van, you can still hear her crying. One of them tried to console her. The other two are like, let's go. And they start laughing when they're in the van. What I didn't understand is where's Van? And also, why is Socks in the front seat? We already paid you for one episode. Why are you trying to drag this on? You know what? Let me not judge. It may be interested to see the severe hairline tied and tethered in into next episode. But you really just left Van back there like that? Or did she leave before? I'm confused. Anywho, this episode left me with more questions than answers ever before. But I'm here for it. It leaves me with a lot of anticipation for next week. If you're watching Atlanta, let me know how you're liking it down below. If you never watched it before and you went through this entire video, thank you so much for tuning in with me. I hope that you enjoy these story time kind of conversations. If you want me to elaborate on any of my own stories, you can check out my old story times or you can request a new one down below. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.